we are here to talk about the Evichi library I wrote that brings OpenCV to the world of Evixer. So first, a little bit about myself. I'm Kuka, a first-year PhD student at the University of Glasgow. My research interests include robotics, um, edge computing, and machine learning. Okay, here is the agenda for this session. I will first talk about what is Evasion, the library I created, and what are the motivations and the key reasons why I wrote this library. Next, I will show you how a leaf library looks like in Evixer. And in case you don't know what leaf is, leaf stands for Native Implemented Library, which means some parts of the library are written in some native programming languages, for example, C or C++. After that, let's see how I approached creating this invention library. And then, I will show you some demos using this library. Finally, I will cover some future directions for the invention library. Without any further ado, Let's proceed to the first couple of questions. Okay, what is Evasion? Why did I create it? So for the first one, Evasion is an OpenCV Elixir binding. Well, great, what is binding? What does it mean? Binding here means a bridge between the OpenCV libraries and Elixir because OpenCV is written in C++ and we cannot use any C or C++ functions in those shared libraries without a binding. What functions does OpenCV provide? It can be as simple as reading an image from a file, putting some text on the image, detecting objects and features in traditional approaches or using pre-trained neural network models. For example, we can do um, future detection or future extraction for an image, and a few algorithms are available for this purpose in the Futures 2D module of OpenCV. You, and then, you can use those detected features to match corresponding points between two images. Then, perhaps you can build your own SNAP simultaneous localization and mapping on top of that. That's the first point for me to reuse the code instead of uh, rewriting it in Elixir. Well, it is always possible to do so, but it will take months, if not years, to get the same functionalities. Secondly, using a binding or a leaf library allows us to use highly optimized code or instructions like saved, single instruction, multiple data to speed up the calculations. For the second question, why did I create this library? Well, before this library, one way to call OpenCV functions in Elixir is to use the port module. It will spawn a Python process and communicate with it. On the Python side, of course, the OpenCV library has to be installed. Next, you open the camera, grab one frame from it in Python and write the binary data to the standard output. Then, the port instance in the Elixir process will, will receive that data, and you can handle the image based on your needs. But if there is any pre-processing needed, they will have to be written in that Python script in advance. That's the first downside. Secondly, the communication throughput is limited. Here is a chart showing the port module's communication speed 
to a Python and a C++ process. And we can see that the speed is relatively slow, uh, especially on the embedded devices like a Raspberry Pi. That's the second point. And the last one is that Python has to be installed. That is a long-term dependency of another language. Okay, so there are three motivations to use the existing code and the library. Second, to um, improve the performance and lastly, remove runtime dependency of another language. Let's look at a simple leaf library before we head into how invention is implemented. The goal of this simple leaf library is to call the get UID function and return the result. Well, how complicated could it be? Well, let's see. So here is a C code for this example leaf library. The get UID function will be invoked and the result will be packed as an unsigned integer. On the elixir side, we have to write a function to load the compiled leaf library, and the rest of them will simply forward the invocation to the leaf library. If we'd like to add another function, for example, set UID, then we need to write another two functions in those files that forward the call to the leaf library. And those two functions will be quite similar to the ones presented here. This is not a big deal if there are only a few, like maybe mm, less than 10 functions, and we can do some uh, copy-paste jobs and get the work done. However, this is not the case when we are talking about OpenCV. Why? Well, there are over 70 modules in OpenCV. That's like thousands of functions. It really is time-consuming and quite error-prone if we were going to do this manually. Therefore, we have to find a way to do it automatically. In the OpenCV source code, there is an OpenCV Python module that will create the binding code between OpenCV and Python automatically. This is done using some Python scripts in three major steps. First, it will parse OpenCV headers for the enabled modules. This is to be a list of functions and get all necessary information for the next step. So in step two, the Python script will generate the binding code in C++. And for the last step, well, of course, the generated code will be compiled into a Python extension. Those steps will be quite similar to what we need to do here to create the OpenCV Elixir binding. For the OpenCV Elixir binding, the Python scripts from the OpenCV Python module are largely modified to accommodate our needs, but they still have really similar structures and logics. Let's see an example. Uh, in those Python scripts, there are many templates to generate the binding code, and I just need to change them correspondingly to get the templates for generating binding code for Elixir. This template here is to generate the code that gets a property from an object. Right now, I'm showing you the template for Python, and for Elixir, we have mm, this. They are super duper similar, right? Except that I first need to get the pointer of the object from the packed Erna Nifter, which is uh, RGV0. After making necessary changes to all the templates, the job is basically done. Well, to be honest, there are some other minor changes to uh, really get the, everything to work. If you are interested in them, they are available on the GitHub repository. That sounds great, right? But unfortunately, here are the catches. First, 
There is no function overloading in Elixir. In C++, function overloading can be done based on the type of the uh, argument of the function. In Elixir, we can only distinguish between a few primitive types like integer, uh, list, floating point numbers, and etc. Second, only one default argument is supported in Elixir, where there can be like four or five or more in the OpenCV C++ code. So I have to make some compromise. You will see what I mean in the following demos. Okay, let's see some demos using this uh, division library. Okay, so for the first demo, we are going to see how do we uh, read an image from file. And here is the test image from Wikipedia. And uh, here we can use the same uh, function name as if we were in uh, C++ or Python. They, are the, they have the same uh, function name. For example, here we are using I am read and uh, I am encoded to encode the uh, image to a JPEG format. Also, we can resize the image. And uh, uh, also, we can encode and decode the image in memory. Uh, and we can also uh, read the PNG file with or without alpha channel. So here uh, we have the same image file, but uh, if we uh, do a simple IM read, then uh, we have a uh, three channel uh, returned. However, if we add this flag, uh, uh, CV IM read unchanged, then we can have this uh, four channel images. So here is the uh, the first compromise I made when I was developing this invention library for some uh, default arguments or some optional arguments, I have to um, we have to pass it as some keyword uh, as keyword arguments, and uh, we have to uh, kind of we have to remember the name of that. Uh, argument. So here we have to pass the this uh, flags, and the, the value for the flags is uh, cv dot cv uh, underscore i am read underscore unchanged. And here is another compromise that I made. Um, so in OpenCV, uh, this i am read unchanged is uh, an uh, enumerated type, and uh, here, and we can see it, it is a function. So, uh, I just have to um, change every value in change every enumerated type to a function, and uh, because we don't really have that in Elixir and uh, And I think this is a good way to uh, handle this uh, enumerated types and also uh, for the macros in C++ because uh, while we can, uh, for example, we can do, we can write this as an atom. However, that in that way we have to uh, um, change this back to a string in the C code and then we have to uh, have a lookup table for the string and uh, that will be a performance issue um, so I just change everything uh, like every enumerated type and uh, all the macros uh, in the OpenCV to uh, functions uh, in this way, well, because 
all the enumerated types and all the macros, they have constant values. So we can, um, uh, so their values will be uh, evaluated at the compile time. Uh, so we don't uh, have this, um, so we won't have this performance issues here. Okay, so uh, last, uh, in the first example, we can uh, also read an image at grayscale. We just need to change the effects here, and, uh, and then we can get the images as in uh, grayscale. So let's see the second example, uh, the second demo, uh, which is a Stitcher demo. Uh, we have, we need to download some test images first. And uh, let's read them. And uh, here is the first image which captures the left hand side, left hand side of a church. And then the second image uh, captures the middle part. And of course, the last one will be the right hand side of this church. Then we can create a stitcher and we can uh, pass all the three images to the to it and uh, call the stitch function to get the result. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so you can see that uh, the all the three images are uh, combined to this wide angle uh, photo here. Okay, that's for the second uh, demo. Let's uh, proceed to the third one. For the third one, we'll see some uh, machine learning uh, using this uh, support vector machine. And here we have some, um, some training data and uh, there are two dimensional data and uh, here are their here are their uh, labels for them and we can uh, create this uh, svm here and we can uh, set the type set it's curl linear curl and uh, the termination criteria and uh, then we can treat the SVM. So let's see the support vectors. And uh, we can also visualize the result, visualize the response map for the uh, support vector machine here. Uh, let's wait for a couple of seconds. Yeah, okay. So here, this dot is the uh, should be the training data labeled one, and all the uh, circles with white uh, boundaries are the training data labeled the negative one. So we can see that uh, here is the our decision boundary, and uh, uh, above that boundary, we predict. It uh, everything as a positive one, and below that boundary, we predict everything as a negative one. Okay, that's for the third demo. Uh, let's proceed to the uh, last demo here. In the last demo, I will show you the uh, how do we use neural network models to predict uh, objects in an image and let's see how this works and uh, the neural network model uh, we will use will be on uh, the SSD mobile net v2 and uh, um, and here is the test image let's see how it works up. okay it's really fast and it only took uh, 18 uh, milliseconds and let's see the result
So as we can see here, um, it basically have all the um all the all the objects like the car, the person here, and uh, all four cars on the right hand side, um, and the confidence um are quite high, it's like uh nineteen. 19% for this car and uh, uh, close to 100% for this car. And um, well, for this per person here, it's like um, uh, just above 17% uh, confidence. And uh, yeah, that's for the last demo. Okay, let's go back to the slides. Okay, so we see the performance when uh, running a neural network on a laptop. But well, how's the performance if you uh, put this thing on a Raspberry Pi? Well, I did a uh, did an experiment uh, on the left side. Uh, you can see that uh, it's the same neural network, but we are. Uh, uh, running that in a in Python code, and uh, it's around uh, three hundred and sixty milliseconds per frame. While on the right hand side, uh, that's the same code I um uh, in the last demo, and uh, it's around uh three hundred and thirty milliseconds uh, per frame. In Elixir, so, uh, so yes, uh, well, as we can see here, we are not losing any performance here in the image library, and then we can see that uh, this is a fairly good result, uh, fairly good performance. Finally, let's talk about integration with numerical Elixir or NX to provide a better overall experience for computer vision in Elixir. There are three steps and two of them have been done. The first one allows users to do conversions between the OpenCV matrix object and the NX tensor explicitly and manually. The second one is to be able to share the matrix data from and to NX and NX compatible libraries without any data copy. This feature is done in last week and will be shipped in the next pre-release. Lastly, I intend to make Invention as an NX backend. In this way, there will be even fewer needs to convert the, um, the uh, OpenCV matrix to other NX backend and vice versa. Okay. Let's have a sneak peek of the invasion backend. Okay, here, let's first set the default backend to invasion backend. And then let's, we can try uh, this function. And you can see here, we have this uh, invasion backend instead of uh, NX binary backend. So, yeah, it, it's working and uh, we can. Uh, also, uh, create a tensor manually uh, using uh, NX down tensor, and uh, well, it just works. It just works, and we can also uh, broadcast this tensor to another shape. Like, uh, for example, we can broadcast it to uh, three, four, three shape, and. Uh, Meanwhile, we can have uh, names for each uh, ashes. Um, also, uh, for example, uh, we can read an image. So before, uh, before this, we when we read an image, we can only see this uh, uh, sharp and the reference and some uh, numbers here, and now. Uh, if you want to convert it to NX tensor, we have to uh, call this 
uh, call this function to convert it to NX tensor. And uh, in the future, uh, I will probably uh, return, return a tensor um, from this function and, uh, and probably for all the uh, matrix object, it will be shown as a tensor and uh, it, yeah, um, well, this may not be uh, um, this is better than the uh, sharp reference thing and uh, uh, also we can do some say some numbers and we can do some uh, calculations and also if you see those numbers you can uh, know that if you have the correct thing or not so it's an uh, improvement in the next version and uh, to and also uh, we can see that uh, to implement uh, invention as an unexpected we have around about uh, 16 four callbacks or yeah, around that around that number and uh, and if we uh, if I implemented all the uh, callbacks then uh, it's officially uh, unexpected so uh, well that will be easier to uh, will be better and easier to when you using this invasion library. Yeah, that's the sneak peek for the uh for the uh invasion backend. And uh, uh yeah that's that's all for this session. Thank you for coming and uh let's go to Q and A session.